In June 2014, the European Fisheries Fund commissioned a project titled Establishing the Location of Fishing Activities Within Scottish Inshore Areas, which ran for 18 months. The main aims were to test if vessel tracking, known as Automatic Identification Systems, or AIS, could be used in fisheries management. The project focused on small inshore vessels measuring 12 metres and under, that mainly fish within six nautical miles of the coast. There are more than 1,500 of these vessels working in Scottish waters, often in remote areas, but there's very little information on where and when they fish. But why is it important to know where these vessels are fishing? Well, the sea is becoming an increasingly busy place. Not only are there many fishing vessels in operation, but there are other users too, such as renewable energy developments, fish farms, underwater pipes and cables, and cargo ships, as well as marine protected areas where some fishing activity may be limited. So now, more than ever before, fishermen are being asked to give evidence on their key fishing grounds in marine planning situations and to represent their economic interests. So what is AIS? It's a tracking system that provides information on vessel identity, course, speed and position. It was originally designed as a means of ship-to-ship -ship communication to avoid vessels colliding. If a vessel is fitted with an AIS receiver, then the skipper can view other vessels at sea on his chart plotter or computer, and it can be used in search and rescue investigations. There are also base stations situated around the coast that receive AIS data transmitted from vessels when they are in direct line of sight. The data is then harvested by tracking websites such as marinetraffic.com and vesselfinder.com, as well as other commercial companies. This means that many AIS vessel tracks can be viewed by the public for free, which can be beneficial in situations where access to conventional and private vessel monitoring data is often difficult to collect and comes at a cost. However, reception may be poor in areas with mountainous landscapes and steep cliffs, which often interfere with line-of-sight connection between the vessel and the coastal AIS receiver, and coverage on tracking websites may be patchy depending on the position of the receivers and local topography. In addition, not all coastal receivers share their data with commercial tracking websites. So the key aims of the project were to assess AIS coverage around the coast of Scotland, determine if it could be used to map fishing activities, and assess the willingness of skippers to publicly broadcast their fishing locations. The project invited vessels measuring 12 metres or less to voluntarily install AIS units for free and trial them for six to eight months. Once the project was complete, fishermen could keep the units at no cost, and Class B AAS units were installed which have a transmission range of 12 nautical miles in optimal conditions. Units were installed on 274 vessels, which represents 18% of Scotland's inshore fleet. The majority of these vessels fished with static gear such as creels and pots for catching prawns, lobsters and crabs, with a few seasonal line fishermen, and about 15% fished with mobile gear such as trawls or dredges. Over the trial period, more than 90 million rows of data were collected, providing information on latitude, longitude, course and speed for the vessels every 30 seconds. And thanks to powerful open source software, the researchers were able to create maps of predicted AAS reception and vessel activity around the coast of Scotland. Let's take a closer look at the results for AAS coverage. In this map, the red dots show the location of AAS base stations and navigation aids. The blue areas show the reception range of the coastal base stations. And the green areas show the added transmission range when a vessel is fitted with a Class B AAS unit. The maps suggest that most of Scotland's inshore waters have AAS coverage, but there are a number of areas where reception is limited or poor. These include the outer reaches of the Moray Firth, the north coast around Sutherland, several sea lochs on the west coast, as well as the west and south of Skye, some areas of the Outer Hebrides, the waters south of Kintyre, and some areas around Shetland. So can this data be used to map fishing activity? Well, an AIS track doesn't tell you whether a vessel is steaming or fishing. So to map the fishing grounds, the AIS data was filtered to only include vessels moving at three knots or slower, and these vessels were considered likely to be fishing. This value of three knots is a first estimate and needs to be further refined based on vessel characteristics and different gear types. This heat map was generated from filtered AAS data and shows a proportion of effort around Scotland, or the actual time a vessel spends fishing. However, if there are more vessels with AAS units in a particular area, 
there'll be more perceived fishing effort in that area. If we take a closer look, this fine scale map shows how the AIS data can be used to accurately map fishing grounds. In terms of fisheries management, this type of mapping can reveal how fishing effort varies over time in certain locations, and this in turn conveys important information about local stocks and can help fishermen highlight areas of high economic importance to them. Towards the end of the project, fishermen were given a survey asking why they signed up, what were the positives and negatives of using AAS, how they rated coverage in the area, and if they thought the data could be used in fisheries management. 162 fishermen responded to the survey, which represents 60% of all the participants. The three main reasons why fishermen signed up were to improve their safety at sea, to provide data on vessel locations for use in fisheries management, and because they thought that AAS may become mandatory for vessels under 12 metres in the future. The majority of fishermen said they viewed both their own vessel tracks and others at home on tracking websites, and approximately half viewed AAS data at sea on their chart plot or vessel computer, and this had very significant safety benefits to them. When we asked fishermen to rate coverage in their area, as seen on tracking websites, nearly half said it was excellent, 38% said it was good, and 15 reported no AAS coverage, i.e. they'd never seen their vessel on a tracking website. 86% of fishermen who responded to the survey said they thought that AAS tracking would be useful for fisheries management. The three main reasons were to help marine planning provide evidence on important fishing locations, to mitigate gear conflict, and to demonstrate responsible fishing practices, for example, within and around marine protected areas. However, fishermen still had some key concerns about using AAS. 34% of those surveyed were worried that other fishermen could see where they were operating, and 30% were anxious that the data would be used against them in some way, for example, to restrict their fishing activities, where only 9% were concerned that the authorities could see where they were fishing. Many skippers also said that they switched their AAS units off when they were fishing, or operate them in silent mode, so that they were receiving data but not transmitting. This was mainly to hide their fishing locations from other vessels and thereby protect their grounds and economic interests. Despite all these concerns, when fishermen were asked if they would continue to use their AAS units once the project was complete, 89% of them said yes. In summary, although many skippers were comfortable with using AAS and noted its benefits, a significant proportion of the fishing industry did not participate in the study and were not willing to publicly broadcast their fishing location. Furthermore, Although much of the Scottish coastline was covered by the receiver network, there are still some key areas with poor reception. This means that we need to explore alternative, cost-effective ways of recording fishing activities, which allow for both the privacy that the fishermen would like, as well as greater accuracy. The University of St Andrews is now running an EMFF-funded project titled Scottish Inshore Fisheries Integrated Data Systems, or CIFIDS, which aims to develop automatic methods for recording fishing activities in ways that are not visible to other fishermen and which will also reduce their burden of paperwork. The CIFIDS project pulls directly on the findings of the AIS trial and will explore options for securely tracking vessel movements using GPS and then storing and forwarding this data over the mobile phone network which has extensive coverage around Scotland. The potential to transmit data automatically to secure port-based Wi-Fi connections will also be tested. The project will also be working with skippers to identify how GPS tracking data can be combined with information such as vessel movement patterns and changes in course and speed when fishing, so that key fishing grounds can be automatically identified. Finally, we'd like to say a big thank you to all the fishermen who participated in the study. Your input has been extremely valuable and will undoubtedly inform the way that fisheries data is collected in the future. For more information on the new CIFIDS project, you can visit this website.